Now we're going to show you how to remove the chain, the chain ring, the bottom bracket, the crank arms, and the torque sensor in case you have to service any of those parts. Now the first step is to remove the chain guard by using a Phillips head screwdriver to remove all four of the screws holding the chain guard on. So now I just want to remind you guys that that last bolt that holds your chain guard on does have a small retaining nut at the bottom and you want to be very mindful not to lose track of that small nut. So now the next step will be to find your master link on your chain. It's the only little link that's different from all the rest. You'll use a pair of needle nose pliers to gently push the retaining clip back away from the post. You'll split the master link and this will allow you to remove the chain from the bike. Now the next step we're gonna do is remove our crank arms from the bottom bracket. You're gonna to wanna to take your eight millimeter Allen and remove the two bolts holding the crank arms on the torque sensor. Next, you'll use your crank puller to remove the crank off of the bottom bracket and the torque sensor. The first step is to screw the base plate into the crank arm until it's seated. Once the tool is seated completely into the crank arm, you'll use your crank puller to remove your crank arm from the bottom bracket. Then you'll repeat the same process on the other side. After you've removed the right crank arm, the next step is to loosen the chain ring tensioning nut. Now the thing you wanna remember, it is reverse threads. So it's not righty tighty, lefty loosey. It's gonna be right to loosen, left to tighten. Once you've loosened that up, you'll unscrew it all the way out. And this will allow you to remove the entire chain ring assembly, giving you access to the bottom bracket nut so you can remove that next. Now, after you've removed that right side, you're gonna to wanna to move over to the left side and remove the left crank arm from the bottom bracket. Now, the next step in order to access your torque sensor is gonna to be to remove the controller cover in order to unplug the torque sensor from the controller. You have four three millimeter bolts, two at the bottom of the controller cover and two more at the top. We're gonna to remove those now. Once you remove the controller cover, you're going to remove this wire wrap here. This will give you access to the torque sensor wire. Now the torque sensor wire is the only flat squared wire with a connector in that little bundle of wires. After you remove the wire wrap, you're going to disconnect the torque sensor connector. So once you've unplugged the torque sensor, the next step will be to remove the bottom bracket caps using your bottom bracket tool. Now it's important to remember this right side is reverse threads. So to the right will be to loosen, to the left will be to tighten. So once you've removed the right side bottom bracket cap, you're gonna carefully pull the torque sensor out of the bottom bracket, feeding the cable as you pull the torque sensor out. Now, when reinstalling your torque sensor, you have to be very careful when feeding the wire through the entry hole. Once you get the tip of the wire in, you want to make sure to pull it all the way through gently as you feed the torque sensor into the bottom bracket. Make sure the torque sensor is seated completely all the way and the wire doesn't have any slack. So now we're going to reinstall the bottom bracket cap. Now make sure you put it back in the same order that you took it off, which is going to be the washers first, then the chain guard bracket, then the bottom bracket cap. So once you have it all stacked up correctly, you're going to reinstall the right side bottom bracket cap. Now remember, when you're installing the right-handed cap, it is reverse threads, so you're gonna go right to loosen and you're gonna spin it left to tighten. Now the next step is to reinstall the crank arms onto the bottom bracket and the torque sensor. The right side will have a little R on the inside of the crank arm and the left side will have a small L. You wanna install the left crank arm first. This will give you leverage when you're installing the chain ring. Now, once you've installed the left side crank arm, you're going to want to install the chain ring next. Now, remember that chain ring retentioning nut is reverse thread, just like that right sided bottom bracket cap. Once you've installed that chain ring assembly, you're going to spin it to the left in order to tighten it back up. Now, once you've installed the chain ring assembly, you're going to install the other side of the crank arm and make sure that you install it 180 degrees opposite of the left side crank arm. After you've installed the torque sensor and the crank arms, you're gonna reconnect the torque sensor to the controller, rewrap the wiring, and then after wrapping the wire, you're gonna reinstall the four controller cover bolts using your three millimeter Allen. So now once you've installed both your crank arms, we're going to install the chain back onto your brat. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is route the chain through the swing arm 
all the way around the front chain ring. Making sure that your chain tensioner is in the correct orientation on the chain, then you will put the chain back together, reassembling the master link using a pair of needle nose pliers to snap the retaining ring back in place. Once you've installed the chain and the master link, the next step is to install the chain guard. So now that you better understand how to service some of the components on your Vulcan Brat, make sure you check out the owner's manual as well as the service manual for further details. Thanks for watching and make sure you enjoy the ride.